Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makhni. You know the show. Pata hai. You know it, right? The Cell Guru Show. Today, very interesting stories. Hai. I have a big review. The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus. New launch from Xiaomi. 200 megapixel primary camera. Good images from the primary camera. So, you say 200 megapixel and the images are... Whoosh. No, this is good. Great design language, but quite similar to the Note 11 Pro Plus. A lot of good stuff, but we'll tell you whether it's as good as we're thinking it is because it's slightly more expensive for a Redmi phone. Then we'll compare it. The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus versus the big daddy, the Moto Edge 30 Ultra. Both have a 200 megapixel camera, but which one? turns out to be better. Lots of interesting things, a lot of different things in both. We'll find out if there is a true clear winner. Then we'll move on to the Samsung A14 5G, a budget phone from Samsung. 5G connectivity, RAM plus feature, which allows you to build virtual RAM, which of course is not my favorite feature. Four years of security updates and two operating system updates, which of course Samsung is famous for. But the story I'm most excited about is the future and the future happening right now. This is our top story the MediaTek's new chipset are in. Now MediaTek has always been the go-to choice for budget and mid-range phones but now they're changing the entire game. They're foray into higher-end smartphones with the Dimensity 8200 and 9200 chipsets is a complete game changer. Cutting edge performance and yet the price point will be much lower. So this is where the big change comes in. Now, can you get a top of the line, absolutely no compromise flagship phone at a much lower price? Phones like the iQOO Neo 7 SE and the Vivo X90 are going to be using these new Dimensity chipsets. So, big game changer. And then, of course, a game review today, the TMNT. This is, of course, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, Shredder's Revenge Review is what we're going to show you. Arcade-style game, but does it translate to fun on your phone? Let's start with today's Cell Guru Show. Our top review today is the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus. So first of all, I have to say it's a good looking phone. Then the 200 megapixel camera with of course the 8 megapixel and the 2 megapixel. Primary camera turned out to be great. Really, really good. 200 megapixel, usually sometimes you say compromises on other features. This one does not. So 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate weighs about 208 grams. IP53 rating. 6.67 inch AMOLED display, which again is a great display, really, really good one. Uh, really saves you a lot of battery life with the kind of technology they've brought in. The MediaTek Dimensity 1080 processor, 4980 mAh battery, and the prices start off at 29,999. Now you'll say for a Redmi Note, pretty expensive, but you can get it at a much cheaper price. Chinese smartphone maker started the year with three launches in its Redmi Note series. The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus 5G is leading the pack. This is a mid-range smartphone that comes as a successor to the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. It comes with a massive 200 MP primary camera, which now seems to be the trend with smartphone companies. The Note 12 Pro Plus has ticked all the right boxes with its specification. In our review, we find out if the Note 12 Pro Plus is truly a flagship killer. Companies are going all out when it comes to the camera prowess of the phone. The camera capabilities of the phone is usually the deciding factor for most people. The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus comes with a 200 MP triple camera setup with optical image stabilization. It has an 8 MP ultra wide camera and a 2 MP macro sensor. Let's start with the primary camera. It captures some detailed images with a good dynamic range and true to life colors. The night shots and the low light capabilities of the primary camera were quite impressive with enough details. It managed to highlight the shadows without too much noise in the photos. Coming to the ultra wide camera, the photos were good but nothing to write home about. It captured detailed images but with soft and distorted edges due to the 120 degree field of view. The macro camera is subpar at best. The 16 MP front camera does a good job when it comes to well lit conditions. It, however, softens the edges in low light. Now let's talk about the other specifications of the phone. Xiaomi has not changed much of its design from its predecessor. It offers a premium in-hand feel with its glass front and back. 
It has a plastic frame. Even though the phone weighs around 208 grams, it does not feel too heavy to hold in use. The phone comes with an IP53 rating for basic protection against water splashes. The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus comes with a 3.5mm audio jack. It also features a dual speaker setup. We used the speaker at about 65% and were happy with the output. The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus has a 6.67-inch AMOLED display. The screen offers a full HD Plus resolution and has support for displaying over a billion colors. It has a 120Hz adaptive refresh rate. It comes with 900 nits of peak brightness and is bright under direct sunlight. We enjoyed high quality crystal clear visuals thanks to the 10-bit color depth. The experience of watching HD content was plenty good and impressed us immensely. Plus, the fingerprint scanner on the side is pretty fast. All that power under the hood comes from the MediaTek Dimensity 1080 SoC. It provides a mix of power and performance. It handles everyday tasks with ease. Playing graphic-heavy games like Call of Duty Mobile was a breeze. There were no lags or stutters that we experienced. We did notice the phone heat up slightly while recording 4K resolution videos, but it was not uncomfortable to hold. Finally, coming to the battery of the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus. It houses a 4980mAh battery that easily lasts a day with normal usage. But if you're one who uses their phone extensively, you might need to charge your phone once during the day as well. Priced at Rs 29,999 for the 8GB plus 256GB variant and Rs 32,999 for the 12GB plus 256GB variant, it is priced higher than our expectations. In the under 30k segment, the Note 12 Pro Plus is competing against the likes of Nothing Phone 1, the Ico Neo 6 which offer better overall performance. The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus 5G might not be the segment killer it was hoping to be, but it surely is an all-rounder and offers something for everyone. Now I've shown you the phone, now let's talk about the most exciting thing, right? The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus versus the Moto Edge 30 Ultra. Both of them have 200 megapixel cameras. Now Motorola came out before and we were kind of, yeah, okay. Pretty good Motorola. But now that we have something to compare it with, we did an ultimate battle between these two phones. You know, from dynamic range to the kind of picture, the natural lighting, does it oversaturate? What kind of colors are each of them giving? Is a lot of software playing around inside? When zoomed in, which one does better? So all of that happening right now. Here's the battle. The rise of the 200 megapixel primary sensor has seen several brands boost their camera capabilities. And today, in the battle of the 200 MP smartphones, we will be comparing the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus and the Moto Edge 30 Ultra. Both phones come with a 200 MP triple camera setup, with the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus having an 8 MP ultra wide camera and a 2 MP macro sensor while the Moto Edge 30 Ultra comes with a 12MP telephoto lens and a 50MP ultra-wide sensor. Let's start with the primary camera. For the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, the images captured have an authentic color with very little distortion due to its dynamic range. Where the Note 12 Pro Plus truly shines though are its low-light capabilities. The camera manages to highlight differences in light and shadow without adding too much noise to the photos. Images clicked in low light have incredible detail with the colors popping while also remaining sharp. The Motorola Edge 30 Ultra's primary camera too didn't disappoint at all. The colors were accurate and vibrant without oversaturating the images. Just like the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, the dynamic range is spot on and Motorola's color science is extremely accurate. For the primary camera, the competition is quite close but we over here give the slight edge to the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra as the colors seem to have a more natural tone while the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus gives it a warmer tint. While both phones primary cameras were comparable, the ultra wide camera is handily better on the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra. Using the Samsung JN1 sensor, the camera uses autofocus and the images captured were incredibly dynamic with no details being lost and the color reproduction was beautiful. The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus's ultra wide photos were quite average. This is due to it softening some details in images due to the 120 degree field of view. As stated earlier in our review, this is a bit of a disappointment from the phone as the images clicked are average at best. As for the telephoto and macro lens, this once again goes handily to the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra. The 12MP camera has a 2x optical zoom. The shots taken from this camera were quite good even though there was some face smoothing overall 
the quality of the images and color tones were spectacular. The Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus's macro leaves a lot to be desired. The photos lack sharpness and don't capture the colors and tone you're trying to photograph. The images from the ultra wide lens are often dull and just cannot compete with the shots captured by the Edge 30 Ultra. Finally, coming to the selfie camera, this is where the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus shines through. The 16MP front facing camera does a good job in low light, something the Motorola Edge 30 struggles with. However, outside of low light, both front facing cameras take good selfies with the photos being pretty detailed and accurate. We notice the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus sometimes softens the images in low light, which isn't too big a deal. But for those of you who are sticklers for sharp quality images, this might be an issue. Overall, in terms of the camera, we definitely give the edge, no pun intended, to the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra. While the primary cameras for both phones are comparable, the Edge 30 Ultra blows its competition out of the water when it comes to the ultra-wide and telephoto lens. The accuracy of colors and the sharpness of images cannot be overstated and in this battle of the 200MP camera phones, the Moto Edge 30 Ultra comes out on the top. Now let's move on to the Samsung A14 5G, the latest budget phone from Samsung. So it has a 6.6 inch LCD Full HD Plus display, which is you know not too bad because the display is a Samsung display. So the Exynos 1330 octa-core processor, which is where the story starts to get a little sad. But the 90 hertz refresh rate, 50 megapixel camera, 5000 mAh battery, and a starting price of around 15,000 rupees makes this pretty compelling. What did we think when we tried it out? Take a look. Looking for a smartphone that doesn't put a dent in your pocket but still gives you the feel of a premium cellular device? The Samsung Galaxy A14 attempts to do precisely this with its large screen, triple camera setup and fast processor. But does it deliver? Well, we are here to break it down for you. The A14 is the newest addition to the Galaxy A series which attempts to provide the latest technological innovations of the flagship Galaxy series at an affordable price. It is made of plastic but does give a premium look and feel. The phone is a treat to look at with an eye-catching design due to the laser edge pattern back cover. Thanks to the textured back, the phone does not attract fingerprint smudges. The phone weighs around 200 grams. Holding the phone with one hand might get slightly uncomfortable. The power button on the side doubles up as the fingerprint scanner which works pretty well. The Galaxy A14 5G has thin bezels on the top and the sides and a slightly thicker chin. There is a water drop notch camera at the top. The phone also comes with a 3.5mm jack on the bottom. Coming to the display of the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, it sports a 6.6-inch PLS LCD Full HD Plus display. It comes with a 90Hz refresh rate which was plenty good. We did not face any lags or stutters while browsing social media and the internet. We did miss the vibrancy and color reproduction that comes with an AMOLED display. The viewing angles were decent. But if you're someone who doesn't care about cosmetics and just wants to know if the A14 will let you play your favorite games, you might be a bit disappointed. Powered by the Exynos 1330 octa-core processor, the phone promises smooth performance and enhanced multitasking. In our testing, we were able to play games like Call of Duty and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge with a few stutters and frame drops, but the main issue came from the device overheating. We found that after about an hour of playing, the device heated up quite a bit. So if you are someone who games a lot on their phone, this might be an issue. The phone provides plenty of power for everyday use and light gaming. The phone ships with Android 13. Samsung has promised 2 years of OS updates and 4 years of security updates. The Samsung Galaxy A14 5G comes with a triple camera setup. It has a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 2 megapixel macro sensor and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. The 50 megapixel main camera clicks some beautiful shots with great details and a good dynamic range. Samsung could have given an ultra wide sensor instead of the macro sensor though. The images taken from the macro camera are not noteworthy and we would suggest sticking to the main camera. The 13 megapixel front camera clicks some good selfies. Finally, coming to the battery. The A14 5G comes with 5000 mAh battery as is the norm these days. With normal usage, the phone lasted us a day. 
Priced at Rs 16,499 for the base variant, one knows that Samsung has made some compromises, albeit small ones. A great design, a good primary camera and a power-efficient processor, the Samsung A14 5G is a good budget phone to earn two thumbs up from us. Let's take a quick break right now and we come back. Lots more happening on The Cell Guru Show. And now what I'm calling our top story because this is a story about the future, our immediate future, MediaTek's new chipsets. Now MediaTek recently completed 25 years in the industry but, and the Dimensity series has actually proven itself to be a really good processor but now MediaTek is changing the game. The Dimensity 8200 promises supreme performance, incomparable power efficiency and the 9200 chipset is like an absolutely insane performer with an efficient cooling system built in. The new phones that are coming up with these will be with us very soon. Let's take a look at what these two chipsets can do. In all our phone reviews here on Cell Guru, you've probably heard the names of MediaTek and Qualcomm quite a bit. But if you're someone who doesn't know much about phone processors and always thought it sounded like gibberish to you, we're here to make your life easier. Today, let's tell you all about MediaTek, a brand that is now starting to give its competitor, Qualcomm, a run for its money. MediaTek recently completed 25 years in the industry and rose to prominence in the early 2010s. Since then, they have usually been the go-to choice for budget and mid-range phones as a processor. While usually the flagship arena has been dominated by Qualcomm's Snapdragon processors, with the launch of the Dimensity 9200 and 8200, the Taiwanese company is putting up a good fight and has shown they are here to stay. MediaTek has often been able to provide cutting-edge performances on a budget, which is what sets them apart. The Dimensity series has been powering several higher-end smartphones across multiple brands. The series is quite popular among smartphone manufacturers, mainly for gaming, imaging power, efficiency, and now 5G connectivity. The Dimensity 8200 promises supreme performance and incomparable power efficiency. With a powerful graphics engine, the chip provides fast frame rates for gamers as well as improved performance in everyday apps. The chip also allows phone manufacturers to use the MediaTek Intelligent Display Sync 2.0, which creates razor-sharp displays. The upcoming iQOO Neo 7 SE will be using this processor. The Dimensity 9200, on the other hand, contains around 17 billion transistors with an expertly built 4nm class chip, which is encased in a thermally optimized package. Basically, this means that your device will stay cooler for longer, even with heavy use. For flagship phones, this is a must, as the focus on performance needs to be balanced out with an efficient cooling system. The Vivo X90, which has already been launched in China, will have the powerhouse that is the Dimensity 9200, and we can't wait to get our hands on it here in India. So this is exactly how MediaTek is pushing the industry forward and attempting to make a splash in the high-end phone and flagship market. Therefore, the next time someone is buying a phone with a MediaTek processor and they don't know what that entails, we hope this explanation helps you in aiding them. Let's move on now to a gaming review. The Ninja Turtles are back. Arcade game, but does it translate well on our phones? If ever as a kid, you went to video game arcades and begged your parents for just a little more money and a little more time, you are not alone. Most of us who visited these arcades had one unifying factor, the fact that the games were incredibly hard and were just designed to take as many coins from us as possible. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge will transport you back in time and make you feel like you're right back in the arcade except without the feeling of going broke while playing. Released on iOS and Android on the 10th of January, the game is an absolute blast to play. Most importantly, unlike other mobile games, there are no microtransactions or advertisement interruptions with the experience being absolutely free to play. If you watch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles while growing up, this game will make you feel like one of the turtles themselves, as all four of them are available to play right from the start, along with two other side characters. 
Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Leonardo all have distinct weapons and playstyles that make the gameplay feel unique. The controls are easy to learn, with just a single attack button. Continuing to attack an enemy builds your combo score, and once your score is high enough, a new button unlocks. This button is a unique special attack that does a lot more damage and changes depending on the character you've chosen. The ability to jump attack and slide also injects the game with a speedy atmosphere with you dancing around the screen while executing your combos. The game's throwback to side-scrolling arcade beat-em-ups is a treat to play, with enemies providing the right amount of challenge and the difficulty ramping up in a fair and balanced way. What's even more impressive is the fact that you can connect online and play the game with up to six people to truly get that arcade multiplayer experience. While the gameplay is smooth and provides a unique experience depending on which character you choose, the levels can get a little repetitive towards the end of the game. By the time you reach the final few arenas, you might feel as if you're just going through the motions. With no dedicated upgrades or skill trees, your characters don't change much and therefore the experience can start feeling a little repetitive. We reviewed the game on a OnePlus Nord 2 and experienced no performance issues or crashes, meaning the game is well optimized for phones. You can finish the entire game in about 2 hours and other than it getting a little bit repetitive in the end, if you're a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan or just a heavy arcade gamer back in the day, we can't recommend this game enough. That then was the Cell Guru Show for this week. Do join me next week. I've got such an incredible array of stuff to show you.